Okay, so for this week's project, we're gonna be taking a look at this BIC Model 960 direct drive turntable. And this is yet another unit that comes from my friend's shop. I found this sitting in a stack of equipment alongside an old vintage upright tube radio in his office. I'm not quite sure why he had a stack of equipment kind of laying around in the office, but it's been there for a long time. I wiped it off and kind of took an evaluation of it while I was there. And what I can tell you about it, I didn't even bother hooking it up, but it does have the head shell, which is a good thing. There's no cartridge in it, but it does have a P-mount cartridge holder already installed in it. And didn't find the automatic uh, record changer spindle for this, but there is the single spindle there. And when I pulled that out, um, I could tell that somebody had been digging around where that E-clip is that holds on the platter. So. E-clip is not there, but the platter is kind of frozen in place. It's real stiff to move, so that may have been one of the contributing factors as to why it was even in the shop to begin with. But again, we have no date, can't track it back, have no idea how long it's been there. I'd say multiple years, but anyone's guess would be just as good as mine. Our intro music this week, we're listening to the Benefit album by Jethro Tull, and one of my favorite songs by this outfit, is teacher. So let's hear a little bit of this and then we'll get started on the turntable. All right, let's come in, let's have a little closer look at this. First thing is we do have a, an intact dust cover. It does have some scratches on it, but nothing horrible. I've seen way, way worse. And of course, we'll be removing that to make sure that, let's just do that now, before there's something horribly catastrophic happens and it breaks. All right, and of course you're seeing the somewhat cleaned up version of this. It was buried under quite a layer of dust, probably two or three layers actually. And the platter is, it, it's, it's stiff, you know. So there's a little something going on there. And then of course what I noticed here is you can see somebody's been digging around right through there. Actually that's even loose. And we're missing the E-clip. It holds on the platter. But everything else is here, or at least as far as I know, everything's here. All of the tone arm components seem to be okay. Everything seems to move very fluidly as it's supposed to. And as for controls on this, I'll be the first to admit I don't know a ton about their turntables. At the intro, I called it a BIC turntable. I think it's B I C, whichever you want to call it British something company probably that was the reason for the Jethro Tull selection and I believe how it operates is you put it in manual mode and you just do it yourself otherwise if you move it up to one I think this is just keeping track of how many times it will play the record one through six times not sure I think that's how it operates though two speeds 33 and 45 and then I guess selecting what type of stylus you're using, maybe elliptical or conical. 
something of that nature. But it is pretty decent, not too, de not too bad. The base of it is not in horrible shape. Still got the logo on it. So I think the first thing we're going to attempt to do is we're going to see if we can get this platter off of it. And it's moving enough to where I think what I want to do maybe is just drizzle a little WD-40 right in through here and kind of work it in. And uh, we'll throw the camera overhead while we mess around with that. So give me a minute and we'll come back. All right, we'll pick back up. Got our WD-40 here and we're just going to try to drizzle just a little bit out of this can. And this can is almost empty, so that makes that hard to do. We don't want to blast WD-40 all over the whole thing. Let's see if we can get a little bit out here. And let's see if we can work it. And it does appear to be loosening up, which is a good thing. Get it to the point to where it'll turn. Now, I'm very interested in knowing what kind of condition that belt's in. I bet you that's in fine shape. All right, let's see if we can get it up. Well, there's no belt at all. Well, that would definitely be a reason why it wouldn't be working. We do have the AC motor spindle moving freely. At this point, let's go ahead and plug it in and see, make sure the cord is intact. It's a nasty, dirty cord, but it does seem to be okay. Okay, here we go. Motor is moving very nicely. Doesn't seem to be any kind of problem there. Now, there's some oil or something here that looks a little, looks a little, uh, I guess that's okay. I thought maybe it looked like somebody may have already kind of sprayed it down with WD-40, but it looks all right. Looking down in there, everything seems to be okay. So I bet you what happened is it may have been brought in for the belt to be changed. And for whatever particular reason, they decided not to do that. And uh, the equip, the old belt got thrown, thrown away. And we wind up with basically uh, a unit that's uh, set so long that the platter froze up on it's one possibility, it's in several, and this is the belt switcher from 33 to 45, that seems to be moving okay. All of this mechanism seems to be working. All right, well let me see what I can do about digging up a belt for this, I have no idea what size it is. The platter would indicate that it's not a very big belt, so I might actually have it. So let's take a look and see what I have and uh, we'll pick back up. All right, we're going to pick back up, and I was able to locate in the PRB book the exact belt they want, which is a 15.2, I believe it was. I don't have a 15.2, but I do have one that's close enough that I think we can get a good test just to make sure that all the functions work. This is about a 14 and a quarter, maybe. I'd say on the safe side, 14. So it's going to be a little snug, but I think it will work for what we want to do with it. And... As far as installation is concerned, pretty much it looks pretty self-explanatory. The belt goes around, obviously, right here, and then you would tab it on to, there's a little tab right here, let's see if I can do that. I can show you better than explain it to you. And once you have it around here, then you just tab it right to here, then when you drop the platter on, the spindle from the motor will drop into here and then you'll rotate it and it should take it off of this and put it on the spindle of the motor. So, so we say, anyway, let's see if I can do this. This is all just preliminary testing. We're not trying to do anything too crazy. And 
and there we go. That's it. All right. Let's should be able to put it back in manual and get it going. There we go. So now that we're down past that obstacle, I think the next thing, let's take a look at this. And I do have a P-mount cartridge that we can use in this. So let me dig that up and uh, we'll put that on and see, uh, see what that's all about. What is this? I'm not sure what this is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. We'll find out. Look it up in the owner's manual. Well, yeah, let me find a, a cartridge. I've got one. And we'll uh, install it and see what we get. So give me a second for that, and uh, we'll come back. All right, we're going to fast forward about a week and had a chance to get a new belt. Actually, I believe it's a, a used belt. The same person that sold me the belt was nice enough to sell me the E-clip for the platter. And so when we left off last time, I was talking about mounting a uh, P-mount cartridge to that adapter they left in the head shell, but unfortunately the P-mount that I have doesn't work with that adapter very well. It will work, but just not very well. So what I decided to do was take the Audio-Technica from my garage turntable and mount that here. And I'm going to leave this cartridge in this. I have another Sure cartridge I've ordered for my garage turntable I'm going to use. But with our substitute belt, the turntable is moving along very well, sounding very good, and uh, there's not even much of a speed issue here. This is sounding real, real nice. So, although I did notice that we do have some issues with the automatic functions, so we'll go ahead and try to end it. And what it will do is it will start over again, but not for a long play album, but for a 45, and then it goes to off and shuts off. So I'm sure we have some gunked up things underneath the bottom of it. So let's go ahead and we'll get the platter back off. We'll take off that substitute belt. I'm going to go ahead and remove the head shell while we're working on this too. We don't want to damage that cartridge. And we'll get it over turn it over and uh, we'll see what we can spot underneath. Maybe some gunked up levers, things of that nature. It's uh, creating an issue with this thing concerning the automatic function. So give me a minute for that and we'll pick back up. All right, let's pick back up. And as it turns out, you don't take the bottom of the base off. You take out a couple of wing nuts and the whole mechanism just pulls out of the base, kind of like BSR style set up and kind of looking at everything over here and it's been a long time I have worked on a couple of these back in the day but it seems I remember this over here being kind of an issue as far as where it drops on the record 33 or 45 and this seems to be you know corresponding with our speed switch and so forth so and these are feeling a little gunked up I'm not going to do anything too official I'm just going to Take a little WD-40 and just kind of drizzle it in there and see if we can get it to loosen up the way it's supposed to. I don't want to flood this thing. And I know if we were doing this correctly, we would just take it all apart and, you know, put new oil and all that and just do it the right way. But let's see. See if this does anything for us here. Starting to feel like it. It's that bottom one that's the really the one that's pretty gunked up. Because it's not even coming back with the spring. This one is doing real good. We're gonna have to work on this other one. Let's see if I can get that in a different spot, maybe. And 
maybe. And it could be underneath as well to the mechanism underneath here. That was it. Now it's just as free as this one is, so everything's kind of moving freely now. But I am going to get something, we're going to wipe up some of that excessive crap there. From what I've seen, it's a very cool looking turntable. I'm going to fix this up and give it to my daughter. She has a little bit of a vinyl collection she's putting together and she doesn't really have anything decent as far as a turntable is concerned. So I'm going to give this to her with a realistic receiver and a couple of small speakers. Yeah, seems to be doing quite well now. All those pieces are moving very fluidly and everything else, everything else is, is moving fine. I don't, I don't see any issues with anything else. I am going to put just a little bit here. over here, but all of this stuff is working just fine, it seems. And all this grease, still, everything here still seems to be pretty, pretty gooey, so I'm not sure if what was used on the center post of this setup with these mechanisms is different grease or it just stayed in place too long and dried up. All right, let me flip this back over and we're going to, uh, we're going to give it a shot and see if this thing will do what it's supposed to do. So give me a second for that and we'll come back. All right, coming back in. Just a couple of quick things after we Got the mechanism portions down here freed up. I went ahead and put it back together just to try it and make sure it would all work. And sure enough, the 45 and 33 start position for the arm, perfect. But it still wouldn't auto stop on its own. So I kind of got to looking at that part of the mechanism and figured out that right here, there's a little arm and there's a little rubber wheel on that that rubs against another arm and I had inadvertently got WD-40 all over that so the two pieces weren't they didn't have any friction between them and so when one moved it didn't move the other one and so I cleaned all that up and the auto f auto uh, shut off feature is now working too or the auto return and repeat function whichever one you choose and so cleaned out the inside of the cabinet pretty good and I know that our old patch cable, which I don't know if it's from the factory or not, but it looks a little spent to me, so I decided I was going to change it. I wanted to keep something nice and gray, and so I have a brand new one that I got from MCM quite a few years ago that was still brand new, so we changed out that. Also, got to looking down into that bearing, because I knew I'd read somewhere online about a rubber O-ring, and this one still seems to be okay. It's not falling apart, it's not deteriorated. And so we're gonna use that. And I went ahead and added some new grease down into the, all of that. and Put some new grease on the upper things I could get to. So I think we're gonna be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get the platter put back on with the new belt. And uh, we're gonna give it a shot with the strobe disc and see what the speed's looking like. And then we should be ready to do a final play test on this. But uh, it's not been too bad. It's been uh, you know, just your routine maintenance items after 35 plus years. So let me go ahead and get things back together and we'll uh, start doing a little testing with it. All right, we're gonna come back in. Now having the new belt installed. 
and use our little strobe scope here. Of course, you're not going to be able to see this on the camera. The camera won't pick this up. But I am blown away by the accuracy of this motor and this turntable. It is absolutely spot on. There is no deviation to the plus. There's no deviation to the minus. It is locked dead on at 33 and a third. This is absolutely perfect. And when you kick it up to 45, it's the same situation. 45, doing the exact same thing. Right on the money. Right on the money. Very little deviation, if any, on 45 and none on 33. So I'm extremely pleased with the speed accuracy of this. I mean, it is really, really good. All right, let's go ahead. We'll put that clip, we'll put that E-clip thing on here. Let me get you over here on the magnifier. We'll put that on there. And there shouldn't really be too much to this. It's a plastic clip. And that's it. I'm going to double check that. But I do believe that is it. Well, no, it's not quite where it needs to be. That's where it's supposed to be, right there. So that's it, and that's what keeps the platter. Perfect. No trouble. We'll put our little trim piece back on here and put our center spindle in. So it looks like we got it going. No problems. Everything working real well. So we'll come back and we'll do a final play test on the BIC 960 belt drive turntable or BIC. So give me a second for that and we'll come back. All right, as we pick back up one final time, having a look and listen to the British Industries Company Model 960 belt drive turntable. Final thing we want to listen to on this is going to be my copy of Who's Next by The Who. And of course, this album chock full of unbelievable material from a band in their prime. Of course, the most famous song from this record is the one we're going to listen to. We're going to check out a few minutes of Baba O'Reilly. And as always, I want to thank you guys very much for checking out the videos. And hopefully this one helped you, if not, maybe one of the others. But again, thank you and Merry Christmas to all of you.